Well, good morning. Welcome to this little presentation, which I've, as, as you can see, called Delphix, the Eternal Rolling Testbed. Uh, a catchy little title because I think this describes, from, at least from a DBA's point of view, the uh, major benefit of having Delphix sitting somewhere in your system. Before I say anything else, I'll just give you a quick introduction to who I am. Uh, I'm an independent consultant. That's not just independent of Delphix, I'm independent of Oracle. I've been using Oracle for 26 years. The reason why I'm actually on stage at the moment is because Kyle, who I've known for a very long time, last year invited me over to uh, Menlo Park to look at the product because he thought I'd be interested. And I was sufficiently interested that I did a couple of presentations on it and so forth and said I'd just do a, a quick 20 minute job here. As you can see, plenty of experience with Oracle, a couple of books I've contributed to, a couple of books I've written. I've done a lot of work with Oracle, and now a huge fraction of my work is problem solving and troubleshooting and helping DBAs get the most out of the database. And I think Delphix is a wonderful tool for helping DBAs and developers get their work done as quickly as possible. So let's start with the idea of taking backups. When you're taking backups, what's the, a, a typical sort of strategy? Uh, we'll take a major backup of the entire database, a level zero backup, everything, the whole volume, and then start taking incremental backups, perhaps taking a full backup on Saturday night and taking an incremental backup once a day for the week, repeating the full backup on the Saturday night and so on. If you've taken that sort of approach, what have you actually got? Well, with the traditional approach, if you want to do a recovery, you have to restore the level zero and then superimpose all the level ones on top and then finish off by rolling forward and opening the, the database. If you're taking these backups to the Delphix system, what this gives you is N plus one copies of the database in a state where you can open it at each of those N plus one different times almost instantly. So there is no need to spend a huge amount of time restoring and rolling forward. If you want any of those versions of the database, you can just call it up and say, open it up, give me a copy, make it my private copy, it'll be ready very, very quickly. So for the same amount of effort in backing up, you get an extraordinarily different return in the results that you've produced, in the, the, uh, the, the finished product that's sitting there in your backup directory. Uh, in fact, I set this thing up on my own laptop some time ago, uh, just as a demonstration of how easy and straightforward it is. Critically, you do not need special hardware in order to run the Delphix server. So I actually set up on my laptop a virtual machine that was running Linux 5, Oracle 11, and that was pretending to be my big production server. I set up another little virtual machine, same operating system and version of Oracle. All I installed here was the Oracle software. Now, I put in a Delphix account on both machines and set up a few little links and so forth, permissions, to allow Delphix to connect to both of those machines appropriately. Then I set up a third virtual machine, which I set up, I actually declared it to be a Solaris 10 machine, but I installed the Delphix VM. Delphix you get as a VM, right? If you can run VMware on any hardware you've got, you can run Delphix. So I set up this Solaris machine, but actually installed Delphix VM, and that was it. And at that point, if I wanted to take a backup, I actually had Delphix here say, take a Arman backup level zero, and in my case, every 20 minutes or so, take a level one backup and put it across here. Then any time I wanted to open up a database up on this uh, machine, all I had to do with a couple of clicks on the Delphix interface was say, oh, go back to 1045 and open up a database and call it Fred. Delphix would log on here, set up a little bit of configuration. It would manage to produce, stored physically here, of course, still, that copy of the database made public, uh, privately available to me in just, a, in my case, just a few seconds. Okay? Very easy, very quick to install, very flexible about where you can put it. So how does it work? Uh, quick check. Um, how many of you are sort of DBA oriented or at least DBA aware? Okay, oh, a bit, bit, uh, bit larger a fraction than, than yesterday. Okay, if you've ever used database, uh, basic file logs, then you're already familiar with roughly the way that Delphix works. If you've got a log segment, okay, here's a log segment, there's a little space management bit at the front there. Lobs, individual lobs are created in chunks. So here we've got a load of chunks. Red ones are current lobs, 
blue ones are chunks which are left over because someone has apparently deleted a log. Now to support the rest of the log handling, there's a log index, and the index actually has two functions to it. The red bit is pointing to current logs, the blue bit is pointing towards chunks which have been deleted at some time in the past, and basically it's accessing them, it's indexed in order of time at which they were deleted. So if you want a particular log at a particular time, Oracle can simply say, I've got the log ID, this is an index, let's make this index read consistent to the moment you want the log to be, and then I can access the chunks of the log. That's rather cute. On the other hand, if you need to use up some more space as you change a log, Oracle simply says, OK, I will write new chunks for this particular log, I will update the index, I will discard, I will forget about the chunks from the previous log, except I will put in pointers to the chunks I've just deleted, freed up over there. So we have an indexing method which says, where is the current version of the data, where is the old version of the data, and I can get whichever version I want by going read consistent on the index and picking the right chunks from the log. But broadly speaking, that's what the Delphix file system does. In the file system, I've got my data blocks. Uh, just as a little bonus, Del Delphix has block level compression, so these data blocks aren't necessarily as big as the Oracle blocks which are sitting inside them. So one of these, for example, might be 5K, even though it apparently is holding an 8K Oracle block. So there's a nice little compression benefit there in your backup. So here are the file system data blocks, and Oracle, uh, sorry, Delphix then has as part of the file system management, effectively a B tree index which is pointing to the file system blocks. And that B tree index is associating, it's, it's translating from a logical order of blocks to the actual physical location of the blocks. And so we have this index, which perhaps we call it time t, represents, allows you to find the file system as at time t0. Now, what happens if you want to change some of the data in the file system. Delphix does not overwrite blocks. It simply creates new blocks and modifies the index. But when it modifies the index, it does not overwrite index blocks, it creates new blocks and modifies the higher level pointers. So if we decide to change blocks B and C, what we actually get is two new blocks, B dash C dashed, we get a new index leaf block, which is pointing off to the old A, but to the new B and C. And because this has to be fitted into an index, we get a new root block, which points to it, and the two old branch blocks. And there, we now have a file system at time T1. So, you actually have two apparent file systems, because someone can say, connect me to the system as at time T0, and they'll be looking at this root block, so they'll see the original file system. Someone else can connect and say, show me the file system as at time t1. They will connect to this root block, and they'll follow towards the variations. So we get multi-versioning through the index. We get a sort of read consistency effect through the root block. You don't see the wrong blocks until the root block has been, sorry, the change blocks until the root block has been written. And the root block dictates which version of the file system you're looking at. So there's a new version of the file system. But the older version is still available, you just connect to the correct root block. Moreover, as you decide that you've got data that you do not need anymore, you know, we've been working for the last 32 days, the data which is 31 days old is now redundant, we can go to the oldest root blocks that we've got and say, follow the tree down, find the blocks which we no longer need to keep because we actually have newer versions. And we can then discard some of those blocks. So we'll discard those four blue blocks there. We'll still have the A block, we'll still have a link through to the A block as at time T1. So it's very easy to get rid of old stuff and the whole system simply moves forward in time. Okay, so how does that work with your Oracle backups? Well, we take our level zero backup, fine. We take level one backups at regular intervals. And Delphix does a very cunning little trick of applying them instantaneously. And then, whenever we want to create a testing database, 
we can say to Delphix, okay, give me a database, go to time T7, follow that down to wherever that level zero has been rolled through to, make a few changes, open the thing up, make it private to me. And I've got a root block which tells me where that version of the database is, I can see just that version and none of the other bits. And if I change what's in that database, no one can see my changes, I get my private copy of the blocks I've changed, my root block points to my data all the time. So we have a picture like this. There's our level zero backup. And of course, as we take the level zero backup, we'll also have picked up all the redo logs that we generated as the level zero backup was being taken. The following day, we do a level one backup with its redo logs. And the level one again the next day and the next day. Now traditionally, if someone said, could I have a copy of the database as at the blue day? We would have to copy this lot somewhere, apply that, apply that, and then roll forward. You don't do that with Delphix. Because Delphix, when it was doing the backups, did this. There's our level zero. That's the one that will take the time to start us off with the redo. We take the level one back up, and Delphix immediately unpacks and applies the level one backup to the level zero. And of course, it keeps the redos. And the next day, it unpacks the blue backup and applies it on top of the level zero. And the next day, the red backup and so on. And it just keeps going. But the thing is, we never change blocks. We make new copies and make sure that we have an index that points to the correct version whenever we need it. So from one perspective, we're just superimposing all our level ones on top of the level zero so that the level zero will always be kept up to date as much as possible. But from another perspective, we still have the level zero We've got an index which points to the level zero. We've got a set of level one blocks. And this index, if we follow this, gives us something that looks like that. So we actually still have the level zero on the disk and it's accessible if we could pick the right index. We've got the level zero with this level one looking like that if we pick a different index. And the same applies with the blue, the second day's database. We pick the right index and what we're pointing at is that lot plus a few spare blocks. And the, the, the red, we pick the right index, we're pointing at this lot plus a few spare blocks. So what we've actually got on our system is four level zero copies of the database at four different points in time and we can pick whichever one we want simply by picking the right index root block. And anyone can say, give me the green one, fine take the root block, apply the appropriate redo to it, that's going to change a few of the database blocks, create a new root block for that person, hand off that root block to them, fiddle about a little bit with the Oracle configuration on their target machine, bang, they've got a complete private database. Any changes they make, don't go back on top of all those backups. They're private. Right? So very, very quickly, you can hand out one of four different copies of the database to all your developers if you want to. So very, very quick to produce new virtual databases. Now eventually, of course, you may decide, I don't want to keep all these level ones, I need to get rid of some uh, data to, to make a bit of space. Well, that's fine because we can look at our level zero, our very, very first level zero and say, well, these blocks here came from just the level zero. They've been changed by the first level one backup. We don't need those blocks anymore. So we can literally delete those blocks from our level zero, throw away the white index, and say our starting point now is the green index, which is pointing to this lot with a few holes in it, and that lot. We have discarded those blocks completely. We've discarded the redo completely. The system now looks as if the first thing we ever did was take a level zero backup at this point in time. So we never need to do a level zero ever again. Right? So there's a moment in time where we can say, from this point onwards, I can give you an entire database, day by day by day by day by day, and just keep going. Any of those databases, anyone can have it. Nothing I do with extra backups suddenly makes any of those databases invalid. Right? We just keep rolling forward. And that's why I call this thing the eternal rolling testbed. You do one level zero backup, and every backup you do from there on 
So you, sorry, you do one level zero, every backup from there on is level one, but every backup looks like a level zero. And you can get rid of history whenever you want to. So what have you got at the end of that? It's the same physical effort in backing up to start with. It's actually less as time passes because you only do level ones from that point onwards. But for the same amount of effort to get started with, you've got an awful lot more. The compression you get from DXFS means that the physical storage you need may be perhaps two thirds, a half, maybe even as low as a third of the original backups that you had. And for paying that price, everyone who wants a version of the database can have their private version of the database and do no damage anywhere within minutes. So if you get Delphix, you've got an enormously powerful tool to give to your DBAs for testing, to give to your developers for testing, to allow your developers to say, I've patched it up a bit, I've changed some code, I want to hand off this copy to a QA person, but I want to carry on with my copy and keep working on it. The QA person isn't going to see what I'm doing because I've handed off and created a new root block for them. So incredibly powerful. And just one little thought, just as an example of what you can do, imagine you've changed some code in some important batch job and you want to test it. And you run the test through and everything works okay and you feel, yep, that's fine, it looks pretty good. How confident are you that you have actually got the right results and done the right thing? Well, you can increase your confidence by saying, let's take, of the 31 backups I can reach because I've got a month's worth, let's take a backup and open the database on the 1st of August. Run the test. The results stay the same. I've got the right answer. Take a 2nd of August. Run it up. Take the 3rd of August. Run it up. You can work through the entire month of August and run your batch job for 31 consecutive days on the production data as at that date for the cost of one level zero and 30 level ones. Uh, it gives you incredible power to do your job better. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Now the real Delphix technical people are all around. There's Kyle particularly there standing by the video. But if you have technical questions about what it does or financial questions about how much it costs, don't ask me. Ask them. Okay? Thank you.